Over the past several weeks, so many of you have said to me, what are you doing different with your eyes? You've changed the way you're doing things. So today I'm gonna to share with you my brand new eye routine. I start my eye routine with this eyelash growth serum. I just heard about this from Kimberly. Her channel is pretty over 50. She is amazing and her lashes just wowed me. They look like false lashes and she was able to do that in about three months. So I've tried so many serums over the past couple of years that were affordable, meaning say under $30 and none of them have really worked well for me. So I'm giving this a go if you'd like to join me on my journey. Now, in addition to the lashes, you can use it on your brows. And I have a lot of trouble with the tail of my brow being not as thick as I would like it. I do have hair there, uh, but I've always had thinner tails. So I'm just gonna go over my brows with a light coat of this and I'm hoping that they get a little thicker. Now, one thing that has helped my brows, they are improving, is my gua sha tools. When I do my facial, I go and massage my brows. So in the last month, I have noticed more hair from that. So I'm gonna go ahead with what's left and just go over the base of my lashes and underneath, of course, I'd like them to be more lengthy on the bottom. And let's go back into the serum. I'm gonna go back one more time since I put all that product on my brows. Uh, some of these lash growth serums I've tried have irritated my eyes. I've had a little bit of swelling, itching. Itching has been the biggest problem, and so I've had to quit them. But I have used this uh, just a day. I used it last night, no itching, no burning. So I was really excited about that. Uh, this is used day and night. So I'll be applying this two times a day, and we'll see the results that I get. Next, I do my brows. I'm loving this Revlon Color Stay because it lasts. It's supposed to last up to two days if you don't wash your brows, and I find it does. One morning, I was in such a rush, I forgot to do my brows, and I got to work and realized I still had brows because I had used this product the day before. So I go this way, and then I go back. And if you get it on the skin, it comes off really easily. I do that sometimes and you can just wipe it off. I have found that many of these primers don't work for me. My eyes, all of a sudden when I apply them, prune up and get creases that they don't have. So, so many people have said, why don't you use Milani? It's so inexpensive. I used it for years, but it doesn't work on me anymore. It really dries out my lids. And some of you have commented back when I've said that and said you have the same issue. So what I've gone to is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This is the brightener. They also have a neutralizer that's amazing. This just brightens the eye area. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is unfortunately, Becca won't be around anymore. And and this is a favorite of so many people. It's the, uh, actually it's called the Under Eye Brightening Corrector. And this is pearlized, it's a peachy pink kind of a shade. Well, this is a really great dupe. It's unbelievable. I used this before. This is my second purchase of this product. This I've repurchased numerous times. And I will show you here, I'm gonna do a swatch of the Becca on my hand. Now the Becca's a little more pearlized and I think a little stickier. Actually, the Maybelline works better for me because it dries faster and doesn't crease. The Becca is beautiful, I love it, but the shades are so much the same, especially if you blend it out a little bit more, they look alike. And I actually find I get longer wear with the Maybelline. So I can put this on in the morning and when I come home eight, 10 hours later, it still looks great and I still have a bright under eye. Now there's a significant price difference. This can run 32 to $34, depending where you buy it. I keep this in my Amazon store. This is something Amazon usually has a great price on and I just repurchase it there. It runs almost $8. Sometimes they'll have it on sale for like $7.50. But this is an amazing product that I not only use for the under eye, but for the lid. When I use the Maybelline, what I do is either put it onto my glass palette first or I just dab my finger on the tip, get it on my finger, and then go onto the eye. Now there have been days that I've been in a rush that I simply use this. And I'm not gonna go into my under eye till I'm all done with my shadow. That way, if I get shadow fallout, it won't stick to it at all. But this does dry pretty quickly. That's something else I like about it for using it as a, a primer for the eye. 
And I go ahead and get into this part of my eye right when I'm doing the primer because I have very deep set eyes and they tend to get really dark on the top of the nose. I love playing with eyeshadow and recently I took out this tool I'd had in my drawer forever. It's from Real Techniques. It's a sponge. There are actually two sponges in a pack and it closes up. I thought it was so great and I tried applying my eyeshadow with it and it looks so beautiful. It blended so easily. Right now it's not available on Amazon. So what I'm going to do today is the same technique I've been using this for but with one of the Real Technique mini sponges. This is available and you might even and have it in your stash. I recently purchased this big palette. I've not had a palette this large in so long because I just wanted to try out a lot of different shades and see if there was a shade of shadow I don't normally use that would look nice in my eyes and very soft looking. And this has an array of warm and cool shades. So I thought it would be perfect. It got great reviews on Amazon. So many people love this palette that I had to try it. So today what I've decided to do is use some shades in this second row, these warm shades shades. I think they're great for summer and for spring. Now that spring's here, when I do my eyes, sometimes I use one shade, two shades, three or more. Today, I think we'll try three. That'll give you a good idea. Now, this shade could be an alone shade. I just get some on the sponge. Right now, I'm going to start with a matte shade just to give me a base, and sometimes this is the only type of shade I use. Now, I'll start in the center of my eye, and I'm just dabbing and rolling. And then I pounce into the crease. I'm building the crease up now. Then I take the sponge, this flat area here, and just go over the edges just to sort of smoke it out. And you can also take the tip and just go like this just to smoke out the area. I'm not tugging at my skin at all. This technique is perfect for a mature eye like mine because I'm not doing any tugging. I find this is even more gentle than a brush. So here's just a basic nude on the eye, one shadow. Now, sometimes I would do both eyes like that. So let's do the other eye. Again, I start in the center. I don't want too much product on the inner corner because that's where all my crepiness is. And that's where most of us get crepey is towards the nose. And our skin in the middle of the eye tends to be smoother. So I start there and just dab and roll. This is what I'm doing. I'm just turning my wrist like this. And this is even softer on your eye than using your finger. I find that using my finger, sometimes I apply too much pressure with a sponge. There's like no pressure at all on the eye. And then I just dab to get the edges smooth. Now, if you use a deeper color and you see too much of a line, you can't get it smooth, just go into a lighter shade like this and put it on the edge of where that shade ends and then dab and it'll just blow it right out. It gives very much of an airbrush look. I'm using this same line that I'm using here and let's go into the next shade here and I'm just putting it right on the sponge. There's so many sides to the sponge and if it gets too dirty, you can just wipe it off on a towel and it's able to get clean really quick. Now, if I find that I have too much product where I started, I go back into the shade that I was just using and just roll over the edge wherever the line is showing just to smooth it out. So I'm going to apply this and I just use the dabbing motion again. So roll and dab are the basic two techniques of this. I'm, let's try the other eye. I've got my color on here and again just dab to get it on and then roll to smooth it out. So I'm going to dab some in and I just go back and forth between my two eyes to try to keep it even so the eyes look the same when I'm all done. Now you could even just do two shades and I could go back to that original shade that I had and just roll a little bit more on in the middle so that you don't see a line from the shade on the outside. And again, like I said, with the Real Techniques brush, they had, or sponge rather, they have a flat side so you can go and just pat and that will blend out your edges for you. Now, I'm really liking this for every day. Once I put on mascara, I would really be good to go. But let's jazz it up a little bit so you can see how it would look with some uh, shimmer to the eye. Let's add a little sparkle to this look. I'm going to go with this gold here right in the middle. I want to show you two ways. I'm going to show it dry and then wet. 
So we'll start with a dry. And what my plan is here is to go right in the center and just do a couple little rolls here. So I'm just rolling it on right in the center and dabbing around the edges. Oh, that looks really nice. And the thing is, if you when you go back to blend the edges, because you're using this dry sponge, it tends to put just a thin layer on. So you can go back over things where with a brush, it tends to leave more powder behind, which makes a mature eye look crepier. Even on a younger eye, if you're using a brush versus the sponge, it makes the product look thicker. So I just like a very thin look on the eye. I love these can make shadows I've shown many times because they're so thin. So they don't look thick on the eye and they just work perfectly for a mature eye. So if you purchased these before, these would be great shadows to try this technique out with because they're very thin and I've done it with these sponges and it looks gorgeous. So I'm just gonna blend out the edges of this and I want to show you one more thing. I want to put a deeper shade on the outer corner because I know a lot of you love to do that and it gives a more smoky look, maybe say for evening. So let's go into the palette and take this brown here and I'm just going to put it on the tip and you're going to use so little. I only keep this in the outer third of the eye. And so I have it on the tip of the sponge. You can even squeeze the sponge a little bit so it's a little more pointy. Right now I'm just going to Dab it, just dot it in the corner and just tap, 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 tap. And I'm just building it up till it's got a smoky look to it. I find I can get a smokier look so much easier with a sponge than with a brush. And now I'll just use the product I already have, I'm not gonna add extra, and just tap in the outer third. And we'll see if that's enough product. If not, I can always go back into the palette. Okay, I like that. I just need to blend a little bit now, and I think we're done with this. And now if you want to put product here, what I would suggest is taking one of the lightest shades, like this one, and I just dab into that, and you can use this to blend out up here. I have a lot of real estate, a wide eye area here, so sometimes I like to blend a little bit of product up here just so it all comes together. And that sort of brightens up my eyes too. Now another thing you can do too that helps if your eyes are droopy and mine droop much more than they used to when I was younger, just lift the eye here and then blend. And this will allow you to get into, especially if you have deep set eyes like me, the skin tends to go back so far it's hard to even get it with a brush. So I just lift my eye a little I would like to share one other option with you and that's using a wet sponge. I find this works great for the shades that have shimmer. So let's go back into the gold. I wanna show you the difference between it dry and with a damp sponge. So let's look at it dry. And now let's go in to the gold with a damp sponge and see how the difference. Now right away, I can see on the sponge, the pigment is showing up so much more. You can see there's so much more pigment to it with the damp sponge. So this works great. All you have to do, I'm barely touching my eye, just lay it and stamp. The great thing about this is if you've done stamping before, this is gonna be so easy. It almost has like a glassy look now. I really love that. It has that wet look to it. Wow, that really changed the shadow. I love playing with eyeshadow. For the last part of my routine, I'm going to use my Maybelline Instant H Rewind to brighten my under eye area, use my Maybelline uh, Sky High Mascara that I love so much, and my heated curler. So let's start with the Maybelline. I go on the outer corner. I love using this as a highlighter. If you don't like sparkle so much, but you wanna highlight the cheekbones, this is a great product to do that. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna put some on my cheekbones right now while I'm here. What I like about this is it does dry down so nicely. You don't have to wait a long time for it to dry. That way I can go ahead and do my mascara. All right, now I'm not going to use liner. I have a little technique I wanna show you that's helped me so much and I've been going without liner. And you can't do this with every brush. I feel like this Sky High Mascara is just the perfect brush for it because it is plastic. I used to hate plastic brushes, but now I've fallen in love with them. This has all these little grippers on it. So what I do is first, I get a little mascara on my lashes so they have a little grab to them. 
Then I lay the mascara down on the bottom of the lash and shake it and then pull. And it almost leaves like a line of liquid liner. It looks like I've applied liquid liner. So I go in, lay it right down at the bottom and just wiggle and hold it there for a minute. Let the product sink in and then go up. And I find when I'm done, you know, you can also take the brush and go this way too and get down at the base of the lash that way. I find laying it there for a minute and wiggling gets the product hooked to the bottom of the lashes. The other thing I like to do with this is lay it there and then just roll the brush up. I'm just doing this. I find my lashes look longer and less clumpy when I roll up the lashes, and then you can always brush through them at the end. Laying the mascara right at the base of the lashes really looks like I have applied eyeliner. So let's do the other side. I'm not going to use any more product. Leave what's on the brush there and then just lay it and roll it. Some of you might have seen me do that in videos recently. I haven't talked about it, but I've been doing this for a while and I'm getting much more length and volume out of the product. So lay it and roll it. This has been an easier way for me to get those inner lashes too. I always have trouble getting the ones really close to my nose, just I guess the way my eye is shaped, but by laying it down and rolling it. Now I tried this with other brushes and some of them are too scratchy. I really like doing this with a rubber brush as opposed to the old fashioned kind of uh, makeup brushes for mascara. Now for the eyelash curling, this is set at 75 degrees. This curler has four different degrees, 65, 75, 85, and even 95. Now all I do is lay it on the lashes and roll up. The same technique that I just shared for the mascara. So I'm, I start in the middle, lay it there, and I can just feel it getting warm and then roll up. I sort of count to five. That's just what's worked for me. You'll have to experiment with it and see. I know a lot of you have said you're nervous about a heated curler, but I have used a heated curler off and on for several years. I had a Panasonic, but it was battery operated. This has a USB port, which is great. I don't have to monkey with batteries. And this one heats up a lot better than the Panasonic did. I think my right eye is curled enough, so I'm gonna go ahead in and curl the left eye. Now, I have to say what I love about curling the lashes too is they stay all day. I find that curling them with the mascara works so much better than trying to curl a bare lash. So this is just what has really worked for me. And a lot of other people curl with the mascara on. That looks good. I would love to hear from you what's your favorite eye palette. There are so many that I love and I'm always wanting to try others that you enjoy. The winner of last week's giveaway is in the first pinned comment. This week I'll be giving away the Beauty Hacks lip mask that I love so much. All you need to do to enter is leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and give the video a thumbs up. I would love to see you over on Instagram. I'm there throughout the week posting reviews of products, sharing tips and things that I hear about. So I would love to see you over there if you're on Instagram. I hope you have an amazing week.